All right, so for this example, uh, again, we have a rational function. You guys can see that there is a polynomial in the numerator, which we'll call n of x. There's a polynomial in the denominator, which we'll call d of x. They're both in our standard form. We can label our degrees. Here I have a degree of 1 in the numerator, degree of 2 in the denominator, and both of my leading coefficients are 1 and 1, right? So I know a, b, m, and n. So I'm good. Now I just need to apply the horizontal asymptote test. Now I need to compare the degrees. We notice that the, um, that the degree in the numerator is less than the degree in the denominator. m is less than n. m is less than n. So therefore, my horizontal asymptote is pretty easy to actually obtain. It's just y equals 0. No math really required. We just need to kind of understand by inspection how the horizontal asymptote works. To determine the vertical asymptote, we need to identify uh, what, is, what values make the denominator equal to 0 because whatever values make the denominator 0 are not within the domain, which are going to produce our um, vertical asymptotes, but not always the case. We have to be careful um, not just to always assume whatever makes the denominator 0 is an asymptote. What we'd want to do in this problem first is to simplify it, um, because not every single value is going to be an asymptote, which we'll talk more about actually in this class. So first thing we always want to do whenever you see rational expressions, if you guys remember from these problems, we've simplified, simplified. So we see that we can factor this, x plus 3. Um, so to factor that, what two numbers multiply to give you negative 4, add to give you positive 2. That's going to leave me with x plus 4 times x minus 2. Correct? Well, actually, I simplified it. And guess what? Nothing really simplifies. So my vertical asymptote is basically me going to be taking my denominator and setting that equal to 0. I want to use the factored form, so therefore I can apply the zero product property, which states if you have the product equal to 0, then both of those, you have to set both of them equal to 0. So x equals negative 4 and x equals 2. Cool. That's it. I know you guys uh, have any last questions. Um, 